Hello there guys, it is now the final week of the Series 13 Horizon 10 year anniversary series. It is the spring slash hot season and in this video I'm going to be taking you through the entire season giving you tips, tricks and tunes in order to complete all of this week's challenges. We have 68 points for up for grabs this week and we have some lots of new rewards including some new series rewards and of course we'll be able to work towards our series rewards uh, as well in this final final season of the Horizon 10 year anniversary so if there's things that you haven't completed uh, like some monthly events or some of the evolving world PR stunts now is the time to complete them and of course we have this week's uh, spring seasonal challenges and objectives as well to complete. First of all, I would like to mention that if you haven't yet received the context of the Series 13 Horizon 10 year anniversary, I would highly recommend heading over to a few of the links that I'll post in the description to AR12 Gaming, JKX3X, you can even watch the official Forza live stream from the beginning of the month, um, well, the beginning of the Forza month, not the real calendar month, when they went through the Series 13. Obviously it is the last series, but if you've not been playing for the whole of the series and you want a bit of context behind and what's going on in the game then of course go ahead and watch that and yesterday we got the information for series 14 donut media as you can see here which starts on the 10th of november which is just less than a week from now because i'm recording this video a day late um so that's got some new Donut Media uh, theme stuff such as such as a Donut Media story. It's got uh, one brand new car and three returning cars from Horizon 4 and the return of Rocket Bunny kits with 21 I think uh, Rocket Bunny body kits. So if you want to know all about series 14 as well I will post some links to series 14 in the description for you to go and check out uh, from various other channels on YouTube. Let's have a look then at the season season rewards for this week. So as I said, the 68 points up for grabs and we'll be working through this festival playlist in chronological order, starting with the Falls of the events and finishing with the Hot Wheels events. So first of all, for 20 points, we have the brand new to Falls of Horizon 5 exclusive Aston Martin 177 from 2010. So this car was in Horizon 4, you'll probably remember it. It's quite a significant car in Horizon 4. Uh, it is a very, very cool car. Uh, it is also very uh, rare and expensive car uh, specifically in the real world so this car can now be obtained for 20 points in the festival playlist it will not be able to be bought in the auto show it can only be transferred via the auction house and may appear again in the Forsland shop or the festival playlist then we also have for 40 points the PLP 50 the wonderful four horsepower three wheeled 44 miles an hour machine again that is another exclusive first introduced in last year's Christmas special series uh, it's crazy to think that we're nearly a year away from when this car was added back into Horizon 4 after not being on the initial car list. So that is for 40 points and again cannot be bought in the auto show. So a very, very cool uh, car to mess around with and obviously a very, very fun for hide and seek and mini games as well. Last but not least then, before we get started with this week's festival playlist, we have the series, a series reward for the Horizon 10 year anniversary. So we have the uh, 80 point reward, which is the Wuling Sunshine, a hard to find exclusive uh, Chinese minivan slash MPV. And for 160 points, which I haven't unlocked yet because I haven't been fully complete in the previous seasons, we have the McLaren 650S Spider. Uh, that is the convertible version, so if you want to use the convertible feature uh, in free roam you'll be able to put the roof down um, perhaps not in the spring season but maybe when we get back to summer um, and you'll be able to uh, have a little ride around in your convertible with McLaren Righty ho then, so as usual let's start this week's festival playlist off with the Forzathon events which is made up of the weekly Forzathon challenge, the daily Forzathon challenges and of course the Horizon Forzathon shop where you can spend all of your Forzathon points that you've been saving up Let's start off with the Forzathon events then with the weekly hashtag Forzathon challenge, welcome to the UK. This will get you 5 points towards the festival playlist and 80 Forzathon points or double Forzathon points for 160 if you own the La Casa Soligera house located near the Teota Hikuan uh, uh, area with the pyramids. That ca that house gets you double Forzathon points in any Forzathon related event including Horizon Arcade because of course you do get Forzathon points from completing the three rounds of Horizon Arcade. 
Chapter 1 is called New Beginnings and wants you to own and drive the 2018 McLaren Senna, which is, of course, the cover car of Horizon 4. Very, very cool car, uh, an incredible cover car, and uh, as you'll probably know, FH4 started my channel off, um, and it brings back so many memories for me. It was my first Horizon game, and even though I've played Horizon 2 and Horizon 3 a bit, Horizon 4 was the actual first Horizon game I uh, bought and played, um, and honestly, it is an incredible game, um, and I know it gets loads of uh, it get loads gets loads of bad kind of reputation for the it, the way it was like different and worse than previous games, but honestly for me one of the best games ever made um, and uh, honestly the McLaren Senna was a great way uh, to title uh, that game. Of course with the Land Rover Defender for the pe people that remember that Land Rover Defender was on um, that uh, cover as well. Okay then, so if you do not own this card, there are three main ways in which you can obtain it to complete this week's weekly Forzland challenge. The first of which is of course heading over to the uh, auto show where it can be bought for 1 million credits. Uh, similarly, you can have a head over to the auction house uh, and buy it for, I think it'll probably be around that price, if not a bit cheaper or a bit more expensive, so in the region of 1 million credits on the auction house. However, if you are a bit short on money, uh, then you might not be able to do any of them uh, two options. So the third option, which is a bit more affordable, is to complete uh, the collectibles Alex delivery by smashing 10 Horizon UK bonus boards and you'll get yourself, as you can see there, three points and a McLaren Senna. We'll be coming to that uh, near the end of the video so if you want to see how to do that in order to get your McLaren Senna either skip near the end of the video where we're covering that or just wait um, until we get to that point in before unlocking your McLaren Senna. Of course it is not compulsory to apply a tune to your Senna for this weekly Forzathon however if you if you do pr prefer to tune your cars for these Forzathon events because it does make it uh, a bit more fun and a bit faster uh, in completing. I have created an S2 tune for you which is called S2 hashtag Forzathon. It is shared under my game attack Charlotte 2017. Um, it's very very grippy. Uh, it boasts the full slick tyres and all wheel drive with rear suspension. It goes around corners like they pretty much don't exist. And also thanks to 1100 horsepower from the 4 litre uh, V8 twin turbo, you get 0 to 60 in 1.8 seconds and a top speed of over 255 miles an hour. So it is an incredible tune, very well balanced. So if you want to download that, it is on my storefront for you to do so in order to complete this Forzathon. Chapter 2 then, which I accidentally uh, completed when I was driving over to the Horizon 4 festival site, is called No Limits and wants you to earn 5 ultimate speed skills in your McLaren Senna. This is very simple, an ultimate speed skill is where you have a 200 miles an hour and you need to maintain that for a few seconds to get your ultimate speed skill. All you need to do is get 5 of these, so if you absolutely flat it out down the uh, highway or the motorway, whichever, uh, whichever one you call it, and in in about 30 seconds you will have your five ultimate speed skills as long as you don't drop below 200 mile an hour in that period it'll just keep adding them ultimate speed skills and you'll have it done in absolutely no time and speaking of the horizon 4 uk festival by the way uh, i did actually forget to do that i knew i'd forgot to do something at the start of the video so what we'll do is we'll head over to that uh, now just so you can see what the horizon 4 festival looks like Okay, so because it isn't featured on the map uh, as a separate icon, which I do think is a bit stupid, I think if they do add these kind of things in the future, they should be featured on the map so people can actually find them. Um, it is located in the what's known as the Tierra Prospera area. However, the Tierra Prospera circuit is here, so I initially went over here and then ended up all the way over here where I found it, um, which is a bit ridiculous, really. Um, anyway, so it's just south of the stadium, as you can see. There's actually a drift zone here uh, that goes like from here all the way, I think it's the farmland or something but I might be mistaken um, so this is where it is and, and uh, as usual for these series it is containing the Horizon 4 festival kind of equipment as you can see there and there's a lovely picture of the Horizon 4 countryside here with a lovely country lane, true representation of what the UK looks like in its full um, and really really nice. Of course we also have uh, Andrew's awesome anniversary livery to showcase here, I did it last week on the Centenario and I did it I think on the Viper as well and possibly uh, even the Hurricane. Uh, very very cool 
Yeah, you may have seen actually Dobra's gamer tag featured on the official live stream for Series 14 because his super livery was one of the official competition winners uh, last week. Um, so really, really insane. I do really like these liveries, uh, and I think they are. It looks great on the McLaren Senna. It really does bring it to life. So if you want to download that gamer tag, is Andrew9565. I'll leave his gamer tag in the description for you, and that is uh, a brief overview of the Horizon 4 festival. Chapter 3 of the Forzathon then is called Horizon History and once you simply earn 12 stars at PR stunts in your McLaren Senna with it being a road car uh, and having loads of top speed and acceleration and grip I'd highly recommend going for speed traps or speed zones so filter your map to speed traps and or speed zones and then just pick your favourite ones out of them categories however uh, of course you could uh, take it to drift zones if you make your car into a weird drift build you could do trailblazers you could do danger signs if you wanted to but of course speed traps and speed zones are, are going to be easier in a track based car um, so simply just go ahead uh, and earn yourself 12 stars in total whether that be a combination of 3 stars times 4 or any other combination in order to get your 12 stars it does not matter just keep going until it pops up saying that chapter 3 is completed the final chapter of the Welcome to the UK Weekly Forthland Challenge is called The Great Race and wants you to win a road racing event in your McLaren Senna. This is going to be a piece of cake, especially with the tune that's applied on my McLaren Senna. Um, simply head over to your favourite road racing event. My personal favourite is the Reservoirio Sprint and my favourite circuit is the Estadio Circuit. Simply go over to any road race, whether it be a sprint or a circuit, and make sure you win it. If you want to make it easier for yourself, you can always lower the difficulty all the way down to two wrist or somewhere down there uh, so that the AI aren't going to be as challenging if you're fairly new to the game uh, if you want to challenge yourself because you're quite experienced you might want to raise it up to unbeatable um, but or you can just stick with what difficulty you're on now doesn't really matter all you need to do is make sure that you win at that race and you only need to win one and then that is the welcome to the UK weekly falls on challenge completed now then we move on to the daily hashtag Forzland challenge there are seven of these and i've accidentally well not accidentally i've kind of accidentally already completed the first two of them hence why i'm starting on seven points rather than five and um, so these appear every day and now that the clocks have gone back it will be at 2 30 pm gmt rather than bst because we're no longer in uh, british summertime we're back in greenwich mean time now and um, so 2 30 pm gmt uh, these will appear every day so one every day and each of them lasts for seven days so that means that the majority of them will overlap into the summer of series 14 so you can always use the view series history to go back to the previous series um, in order to complete these if you didn't complete them before this weekend's uh, as I said they'll overlap into the next season um, so that is basically them if you're having any issues with them as they pop up throughout the week um, whether you think they're bugged or you simply just don't know what to do I'll be more than happy to help just leave me uh, the name of the challenge and the, the description of what it says uh, in the uh, comments section um, and I'll be more than happy to help you out and I'll try my best uh, to help you get that completed and then of course we have the lovely Horizon Forzathon shop um, which this week features the McLaren Speedtail, the RJ Anderson Rockstar Pro Truck, the Horizon Mexico themed car horn, the Air Guitar Emo and the Horizon UK t-shirt and of course the standard wheel spins and super wheel spins so uh, some really good offers in here the 700 Forzathon points for the Speedtail is quite good in comparison because it is 2 or 3 million in the auto show very very cool car actually uh, if you've never seen the episode on the uh, BBC Top Gear where they raced it against a jet fighter, I would highly recommend that you do that. A jet fighter, typhoon kind of thing. Uh, I'd highly recommend you watch that. Either Google it uh, or YouTube search it or actually try and find the episode of Top Gear and watch the full thing because it was really, really good. Uh, the RJ Anderson, of course, he's a level 8 car in the Eliminator. Um, I do really like it for A-class cross-country racing, obviously all-wheel drive swap because rear-wheel drive it's a bit of a death trap. Uh, the Horizon Mexico car horn, just to give you a bit of a taste, sounds like this. So, um, it sounds a bit more like a uh, Sea of Thieves in my opinion, however, um, that is the Horizon Mexico car horn and uh, that is the Forzathon shop. With that we have already ticked off our first section or chapter of this week's festival playlist and we're already on to the seasonal events. Very exciting. This is the longest section containing the trial, event lab, playground games, 
PR stunts and the seasonal championships as well as a Horizon Tour oh no there isn't a Horizon Tour my mistake I thought there was uh, so this is the longest section as I said it will take the longest so let's crack right into it and start off with the trial the trial then this week is called Stock Showdown Land Rover Velar and it will get you 10 points towards the festival playlist and a McLaren P1 reward. It is of course a co-op event meaning that you and a team of 5 other people so a team of 6 will be racing a team of 6 driver tires and it is a best of 3 tournament and um, so basically it's the first team to reach 2 um, out, uh, 2 out of 2 uh, like points kind of thing 2 race uh, wins uh, uh, that will win so it could be uh, one all and then it is uh, the, the next uh, one wins so two one or it could be two nil either way um, so basically you and your team have got to work um, as a team to overtake the driver tires and thus get more points by overtaking them um, and then hopefully having a higher total overall at the end of the races uh, that the driver tires if the driver tires overtake you they get points so it works the same way and it's whichever team has the most points at the end of each race that wins that race of course then uh, thanks to the uh, title we were able to figure out that the restriction uh, is a stock as in no upgrade Land Rover Velar which is B-Class 638 um, I did get very annoyed actually when this w when this car first got released in Horizon 4 as part of an update that they called it a Land Rover Velar because actually technically speaking it's a Range Rover Velar and if you're really technical about it it's a Jaguar Land Rover Range Rover Velar uh, it's actually not a Land Rover because as you can see on the bonnet it says Range Rover um, and if you look on the website it will say Range Rover or Land Rover Range Rover because it's not just a Land Rover because it's a Range Rover uh, I hope that makes sense um, so we'll be racing the Range Rover Velar first edition from 2018 uh, in B-Class 638 with no upgrades so um, there's not really much point in me giving you a car suggestion because um, that's the only car you can use for that one so that's that done quickly Next up in the seasonal events section we have another event lab feature this time from Arc Raiders uh, and their event is called Dino, Dino Fire Speedway Hot Wheels um, I can't be bothered reading out the whole of the description but basically it's a Dino Fire Speedway Hot Wheels um, edition so uh, this will get you three points towards the festival playlist and a raw emote um, that I don't know whether the developers have got dyslexia or they don't know how to spell because that's not how you spell raw um, unless it's supposed to be raw R ah, in which case it should have a hyphen in it but um, let's not question it because uh, as we know it, the developers and they break many things and do many things that are weird and so we just don't question it anymore Anyway, so this is a restriction of S1 class anything goes, so again I can't really suggest anything because I don't know what the uh, circuit is, I don't know what terrain it's on or what it involves, so all I can say is pick a car in S1 that can do anything, um, so then you're prepared for anything that may come, that's all I can suggest, um, to be honest with you, uh, so uh, good luck. Right, next up then we have the seasonal playground games, this time it is many games of survival, um, I still don't know why they are continuing to do uh, just like specific games like King, Flag Rush and Survival, because the playground games is supposed to be like you do all three games but for some reason in the past few series they've decided to limit it to one and I'm not gonna lie it does get a bit repetitive because you do a game of survival and then you do another game of survival uh, or, and then you do another game of survival um, so yeah it does get a bit repetitive and actually again it's a best of three um, and it's two teams this time there are no driver tires so it's basically two teams of six but quite often people quit but actually you don't need to quit because remember if you don't know you still get the reward which is a Range Rover Velar and three points even if your team finishes second which is a polite way of saying last so even if your team finishes last you still get the reward so actually you could say there's no point in playing but actually the risk is then otherwise you get disconnected so what I would suggest is just pick a nice car and just kind of play the game uh, and even if you lose it doesn't matter so don't get stressed that's what I would suggest 
Having already mentioned the reward, then let's get straight into the restriction, which is B-class off-road, and uh, as I can interpret from the picture there, it is at the aerodrome. However, I might be wrong. It might be at somewhere else, but I'm not really too sure where. Um, never mind, it's at Ekbalam. So, uh, yeah, it's at Ekbalam, not to the aerodrome. So just forget that I actually just said that, please, and thank you. Again, without questioning the developers, but questioning it at the same time, I'd like to know why they put one of the heaviest and most um, un un unmanoeuvrable vehicles on the one of the tightest and manoeuvrable needed areas on the map, where there are a lot of things to crash into and you need good manoeuvrability. But um, let's move on from that and see what cars we've got. So we've got the 2014 Ford Ranger T6 Rally Raid. This shoot is actually tuned by Ward Fiandi, so I'll leave his game tag in the description for you because you won't be able to spell it from my pronunciation, which is correct, by the way. Um, this is using the uh, V8 diesel engine, so it's very, very torquey, but very, very heavy. Um, and then we have one of my tunes, which is on the Porsche Macan LPR Rally Raid from 2018. This is using the 4 litre flat 6 from a Porsche, producing nearly 500 horsepower. Very, very heavy again, but uh, again, off road race tyres. So both of them are very, very similar, really, in performance. Both of them don't really turn, and both of them are very, very heavy. Um, so basically, just pick whichever you want. And obviously the Porsche is tuned by me and the uh, the range is tuned by Ward. Now we have ourselves three PR stunts, a drift zone and two trailblazers. And if you're new to the channel, here you get to see me drive uh, a few cars and probably fail uh, one or multiple of the PR stunts. So as usual in every video, I'll be showing you uh, the overview of the challenge, the tune and cars I'm suggesting and are using. And then I'll show you gameplay of me completing it first try. So if I fail, um, you get to see me fail and I don't edit it out so I uh, yeah if I complete it first time you get to see the first run if I don't complete it first time you get to see the run where I don't complete it um, which is very fun um, obviously it could be interpreted as it's an impossible challenge but we do just remember that quite often I do have many skill issues when I am recording or streaming so we do have to take that into account uh, when reviewing what is going on First up then on the PR stunt agenda we have the Reservoir Drift Zone. Two points in the super wheel spin and it requires S1 class TVR. So it is located uh, by the Reservoir, hence the name, which is just to the uh, east of Mule here. Um, so it requires 120,000 points um, and as you can see it is quite a long drift zone so much so you can't even see the end of it. Um, so let's go and see what cars I've got and then we'll give it a crack. Okay then, so um, it's probably apparent that TVR aren't particularly renowned for having a forte in drifting. Um, so I have got two builds, both of them are race builds, but hopefully we're going to be able to drift at least one of them. Um, so, first of all, we have the TVR Cerbera at speed 12 from 1998. This is a road slash dirt build made by me, featuring... Um, Dobra's design for Wolf, which I downloaded unbeknowingly that it was made for Wolf. Um, so it's got 850 horsepower, it is incredibly light, uh, it boasts a Forza wing and rally tyres I believe, um, however it isn't actually very grippy so I'm hoping that we'll be able to slide the back end out and because the point objective isn't too bad we'll be able to use the all wheel drive grip to be able to maintain control throughout the drift zone. Um, then we also have the 2018 TVR Griffith, um, this is actually tuned by DJS aka Don Joe Song, if you don't know who he is you really need to um, do some more research and watch some more YouTube um, because he is one of the most renowned Forza players ever. Um, this is again a race build, very heavily more focused on road. Um, it does also have a Forza wing but it isn't showing because I don't know did the tuning for you on. Developers please do fix that because it is very annoying. Um, so I'm going to to gonna attempt to drift the speed 12 because I think it will be more driftable. Thankfully, because the game has been really kind, it's decided to go very dark. So um, by the time we get to the end of the drift zone, I guarantee it will be pitch black. Um, I forgot that the gears are really sus in this car. Um, I think it has 
Yeah, it has eight gears, but the first five gears are used before 100 miles an hour, which is very irritating. However, we can use the power, we can clutch kick, we can maintain control thanks to the amazing systems of the all-wheel drive, um, and we can slide. Um, I'm not going to lie, it does kind of gain grip halfway through the corner, meaning that I can't slide for as much as I want to, but for a, a wannabe race build, well it is a race build, but kind of wannabe, um, I believe that it's quite good personally, um, and I don't usually drift in fourth gear at 50 miles an hour, so <laughs> yeah, it's quite impressive. Uh, the engine is quite torquey, um, which is very helpful, obviously. We only needed 120,000 points, but I like to go over the top. Um, I, I could drive, but actually it's probably faster to go around these corners drifting than it is uh, otherwise. So we'll just continue uh, sliding our way. We might get to 300k, not that it matters of course, just for boasting purposes maybe. Yeah, I, I think we'll be, we'll be able to get 300k before the end. So there's 300k, nice. Uh, not that it was at all required, but um, you know, I just like to show off. <laughs> 327k points, that was 127, uh, 227k, no 207k more than we actually needed. So that is the Reservoir Drift Zone completed, we have ourselves two points uh, and a very lovely, um, a, a very lovely something, I'm not sure what, what was the car reward? I can't really remember, so let's just gloss over that. Next up then we have the Desert Descent Trailblazer, if you don't know what a trailblazer is it's basically a point to point dash in a, where the uh, clock starts at a certain time and then counts down and you have to have a certain amount of seconds left uh, at the end once you cross through the finish line. Um, so it's basically similar to like a point to point race but timed. Um, so it, two points in a super wheel spin is the reward as usual and it requires A-class Land Rover for this one. Um, it starts halfway up the volcano on the dirt side um, and then goes, if you can see at the bottom left of the screen where it says why reveal treasure map, you can, can you see a red arrow just below that and a flare that pops up now? Um, so that means that the finish line is somewhere down there. It's too far away for us to see, even in full zoom out. Um, so I'm just going to send it through the desert, try not to smash into rocks and trees and jumps, and uh, hope for the best. We need 12 seconds left um, when we cross the finish line. Righty-ho then, I have two options for this one, the first of which is the 1973 Land Rover Range Rover. Um, it's got 850 horsepower, full off-road race tyres and all the kit to go zoom. And then we have the 2020 Land Rover Defender 110X. Uh, running 894 horsepower, um, is 300 kilograms heavier um, and um, it's kind of, well it's not at the top of A class, it's kind of just a cruisy off-road build, uh, more chill off-road build, but very very fast uh, and very capable off-road. Uh, I'm going to go with the older Range Rover, just because I know it's an absolute beast and it will surprise you how fast uh, it's capable of going. Okay then, so the Trailblazer is just down there, as you can see the uh, gates there. I'm just kind of parked up on a hill here because I know that the finish line is kind of uh, ahead of where I am here. Um, you'll be able to see it when we go across the line. Um, it's on the top of a hill, uh, quite far over there, as you can see. So that's where the finish line is, over by the hotel. We have got to absolutely send it down here. Um, preferably by not flipping over, but we, we might be able to uh, rescue that one. Um, and then we've got to send it through the desert and uh, hope for the best. So uh, let's get the throttle down uh, and see what this uh, beautiful Range Rover can do. Um, clearly the suspension is not made for going through the Baja like you're in a Dakar rally. Um, and uh, also it's, um, it doesn't appear to be very good at uh, seeing where it's going. Because I, uh, I can't see over the lights really. Them, uh, them roof lights are causing uh, a few issues with my vision. <laughs> um, so we've just got to send it. Um, there probably is an ideal route to this one. I don't know it and even if I do I'm not using it. Uh, I'm just sending it and hoping that I have more than 12 seconds left on the clock at the end. That's essentially what I'm doing here. Um, I do kind of know that we have to go under a bridge in a minute but that's about all I know. Um, 
and I also know that the, the getting to the uh, to the top of that mini hill is also rather annoying. So I'm uh, I'm hoping that we can uh, we can succeed. So we've got about 40 seconds from now to get up here. I'm hoping we can do it because I know that this bit is very annoying. Um, because it, it appears that you're there and then you aren't at the same time. Um, so hopefully we can get through here and despite many flips and many problems um, we have got here in 28 seconds left um, which is a new PB that was a very scruffy run to get a new PB but we did it um, and I'm not going to complain at that the final PR stunt for this week is the over the dune trailblazer two points in the super wheel spin and the restriction is A class Jaguar um, it starts a bit further north than that one actually and it finishes somewhere over in the very west of the desert there eight seconds left on the clock is the restriction for the hot season um, and as I said A class Jaguar uh, same rules apply we just absolutely send it and hope for the best for this one I have a machine very capable of the defeating the toughest of our high roads it is the 2017 Jaguar F-Pace S with the off-road lift kit and some f uh, fat off-road chunky tyres it is boasting over 630 horsepower from a 6.2 litre V8 it's got full weight reduction and it is ready to absolutely destroy this trailblazer or at least I hope so let's give it a go 55,000 credits from the auto show for the base car around double that um, well double that for with the tune uh, and you have yourself a 100k monster off-road Baja vehicle here we go then again perched on a hill the uh, starting location is just down the bottom here we're going to absolutely send it again I have done this trailblazer before and I know the rule is basically just to absolutely send it I also know that it can sometimes be quicker to go along the coast so that is exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to head over to the coast here and follow it round uh, that way it means that I'm not going to be going over too many of the Baja dunes and I'll be able to get to the finish line quicker um, because as you can see it is a few kilometres over that way so what we're going to do is we're going to cut through here um, I, I thought that was a destroyable fence but clearly it wasn't so we'll just gloss over that so we're going to cut through here then we're going to follow this road along to the coast here um, and then hopefully we'll be able to pick up the coast road all the way to the finish as you can see it doesn't feel like we're going so fast but we're doing 170 miles an hour in an off-road uh, V8 Jaguar um, which is absolutely insane it shouldn't really be possible to be honest with you but that is Forza for you um, again that is Forza and also smashing me into a, into a, into a pipe um, so we head over here and that jump wasn't ideal however we've managed to maintain quite a lot of speed there now we get on the course road and we'll be able to absolutely roar all the way up here uh, we'll just cut off this corner because obviously the AF pace isn't going to be too good uh, on the road because of the off-road race tyres and the massive body kit now we absolutely send it along here um, and then at the finish um, is actually just round a couple of them rocks so we'll absolutely send it round there and hopefully have no issues in completing that so there we go we we'll rock it round here now and I'm going to hop on the beach now uh, and just go straight for the finish um, I didn't I didn't um, yeah I didn't predict that there was going to be loads of uh, bumps on there but we didn't do too bad with the crazy Jaguar lift kit suspension as you can see we just go up this little ramp and absolutely fly through the finish and um, we're going to do it with over 40 seconds to spare 41.8 seconds to spare there a massive new pb for me on that trailblazer um, an incredible way to get that final pr stunt done very well done to the f pace on that one moving on to the seasonal championships there's actually only two seasonal championships this week um, and both of them will we'll, we'll run over now for these seasonal championships the difficulty is locked to highly skilled uh, in order for you to get um, the maximum reward meaning that it is a bit annoying if you want to do it at higher difficulty but it does mean that also if you accidentally forget to change the difficulty it will do it for you making sure that you get the top reward uh, so these can be done in solo or in co-op if you're doing it in solo when you enter the championship it will pop up the three races of that championship and they they can be identified and uh, differentiated from the others because they will turn white instead of red so the white seasonal color rather than the red seasonal color 
um, and then um, if you're doing it and you'll have to uh, drive or fast travel to each of the races in the championship um, and have an overall points total greater than every single other AI. If you're doing it in co-op it works the same way as the trial so it'll fast travel you between the races um, and you can do it with your friends or in a convoy with some other people um, and um, basically it's there for a best of three and you have to get more points than the AI in each race same way as the trial works. The first championship then is called Well Seasoned. It will get you five points towards your festival playlist and it will get you the song Odessa A Moment Apart uh, to add to your Horizon mixtape collection. Uh, it's street racing for this one and the restriction is A Class Country UK. The first car I have to suggest for this one then is the 2012 Lotus Exige S. It's running nearly 400 horsepower and rally tyres, a very very good build there. And then we also have the Mini John Cooper Works GP from 2021. This is a car pass exclusive so if you don't own the car pass you won't be able to use this one. However for those who do have car pass it's a front wheel drive monster with over 400 horsepower um, and a really massive wang on the back there. Uh, it's an incredibly fast car considering it is front wheel drive. Um, I have actually taken down a bone shaker in it before and that's how good it is and they are the only two cars I have to suggest for this one if you want in a safe build go with the Lotus it is always a safe build to use there are better tunes out there for this car to make it more OP but my tune is really easy to drive and um, we'll be able to get you this challenge completed easily if you want a bit more fun then of course go with the Mini um, but obviously as I said that's only available to car pass uh, uh, owners the second and final championship of the spring slash hot season is called Mini Mayhem. It is dirt racing, five points, and an Aston Martin DBS SL from 2019 is the reward. And the restriction is B Class Mini for this one. Of course, with it being dirt racing, you might want to consider taking the awful Mini JCW buggy or the awful Mini X Raid. Um, so, did I just say Mini JCW buggy? Is that what it's called? I'm not sure whether that's what it's called actually, but the two awful uh, off-road minis, um, they are obviously more comfortable doing uh, dirt and cross-country racing, however uh, I don't have any of them tuned and I don't wish to choose them because they're both awful, so I've got uh, some uh, really nice suggestions for you. So first of all we have the 1965 Mini Cooper S. Um, it is a full grip build, it isn't the best because you basically send it around every corner but then it lacks completely in power and top speed. Um, and then we have the Mini JCW GP from 2012, again a very uh, heavily biased towards grip, meaning the acceleration and top speed are quite poor. Um, however it is running off-road tyres, same as the Mini, uh, I think they're both on rally tyres actually, unless that one's on off-road race tyres, um, so it'll be really comfortable with the dirt terrain and hopefully we'll be able to hold off the highly skilled driver tyres in this one. That is the longest section of the festival playlist ticked off and we now move on to the challenges section, boasting a treasure hunt, photo challenge, horizon open, the eliminator and collectibles, so let's get straight into it. First up then we have the first and final treasure hunt of the Series 13 festival playlist. Hopefully we'll get more in Series 14, but this is it. It's called Fame and Fortune. It will get you three points towards the festival playlist and the highest ever uh, reward for completing a treasure hunt, which is 250,000 credits, a legendary credit reward there. One of the best rewards you can get in wheel spins again, in terms of credits. And if you're new to the game, this is really, really helpful towards getting your cars to complete in the challenges. Um, so definitely a really nice reward there um, for this treasure hunt. The treasure clue then, I'll firstly read it out and then I'll dissect it uh, to tell you exactly what you need to do. So it is, the airfield speed zone is said to be silly, especially when driven in a jeep named Willy. Um, it's supposed to be, um, is it a, a PG3 or a PG7 this game? And yet they're mentioning Willys and things like that, but uh, we'll, we'll just ignore that, won't we? Because... Um, because it's just it'll just make me look immature 
Anyway, so to dissect this challenge, you essentially need to hop in the Jeep Willys MB, which actually comes under the Willys category in your garage. So don't look, don't go looking under Jeep because you won't find it. It's under Willys, and then it is called the MB Jeep from 1945. It can be bought, I think, for around 40,000 credits or something like that. Very, very cheap. However, I've had them gifted to me before. I think at the start of the game, when this gift drop thing came in, there was a massive craze with people gifting each other Willys Jeeps. And it was a bit annoying so I ended up with loads of them and I had to get rid of them but I've still got two or three um so you need to hop in that I would highly recommend tuning it so I've got uh, nearly the top of S1 class tune for you to use which is really powerful and also really grippy so you can download that and then you need to head over to the airfield speed zone and earn at least one star which is 150 100 yeah 100 miles an hour um, so i'll go ahead and demonstrate what that looks like now just so you've got an idea of what you need to do and then you could go ahead and do it for yourself and once you've done that it will say treasure treasure hunt complete and you'll be able to be given the clue for the treasure chest and go ahead and find it Okay, so to complete this treasure hunt uh, clue, you need to head over and filter to speed zones. Then you need to head to the bottom left of the map near the uh, southwest, yeah, southwest airfield, where you will find the airfield speed zone. Then you need to earn at least one star, which, as I previously mentioned, is 100 miles an hour plus. So let's go ahead and do that, and then it should hopefully say after we've got that one star or more that we have completed uh, the treasure hunt and it'll pop up saying press to view um, so this car has got full slick tyres meaning it can actually corner unlike most Willys Jeeps um, it's also boasting uh, many horsepowers I think around a, ho a thousand horsepower oh no 668 from the turbo rally I don't want to go too over the top um, so that's 146 miles an hour there. Treasure challenge complete. So we we'll pr click press the view. It takes a few seconds to load up. Uh, then, in a similar way to which the barn finds work, we get a circle here. And instead of it being purple, it is this orangey, pinky, red colour. Um, and then in here somewhere will be the treasure chest and all we need to do is go ahead and find it um, and another way you can do this is after that pops up head over to your vessel playlist and the uh, image behind the treasure hunt will have changed so as you can see there it is so it now shows a picture of the treasure chest itself with a bit of the background and what that does is it gives, gives you a bit of a context as to where um, the thing will be located so with my map knowledge I know that that is somewhere on the airstrip which is in that circle and because I know that this circle that we got on the map is towards the end of what one end of the airstrip I know that it'll be near one of the ends and then I also know that that mountain that we can see is at a specific end meaning that it will be at the other end so putting all them pieces together I know roughly where that will be located so I am now going to go and show you where it is then we're going to smash it together and get out of 250,003 points However, if you don't want me to spoil it for you and you want to go and find it yourself either now or when you get on the game later, if you're not currently on the game now, then of course you can skip around 30 seconds in the video from now to make sure that I don't spoil it for you. I just wanted to include that spoiler uh, just so I don't get any uh, comments saying that I spoiled the treasure hunt for them because they didn't want to know where it was. Okay then, so spoiler alert out of the way, I can now tell you where the treasure chest is located and when you actually drive into that circle it does give you the option to go and view that extra picture that's in the festival playlist now if you haven't already done so already. So as you can see, then that's the mountain that we were looking at in the picture and this is the view we had of the airstrip from where the treasure chest is located. So I was able to decipher that it must be at the end where the danger sign is located so you can see ahead of us now is the danger sign. So uh, to give you a bit of context the picture will have been taken from around um, this angle on the floor here so that the treasure chest appears bigger yet in reality it's actually quite small so all we need to do now is finish the deed by smashing into the treasure chest we get 250,000 credits which as I said is the biggest reward we've ever got for a treasure chest and um, which is really really cool and of course three points towards the festival playlist and the final thing I want to show you with this car is the following watch the windscreen Yep, you can basically remove the windscreen. Very, very cool. 
Okay then, now we have ourselves a photo challenge. So it's called Hashtag Horizon Anniversary and it wants you to photograph the 2018 McLaren Senna at the Horizon 4 Festival site in Tierra Prospera. So, uh, from the start of the video we already know where that festival site is located. I've already shown you that, however I'll also show you it again now. And we already know how to obtain ourselves the McLaren Senna from the Forzathon section. So all we need to do is combine the two uh, and go ahead and take ourselves a picture uh, at the Horizon and four festival site in our McLaren Senna. So this will get us two points towards the festival playlist and a UK cover car car horn reward um, which is very very cool that'll be like the sound of the Senna driving past like a drive for uh, a drive through kind of uh, shot there. Okay then, so here is a, a quick and brief example of what your photo could include. All it needs to include is somewhere within the region of the Horizon 4 festival site, as long as it includes one of the elements of the festival site, it doesn't really matter. I've chosen to use the picture that they've displayed in the background here of the lovely UK forest area, uh, and of course we get to display uh, Dobra's amazing livery again. So all we need to do now is simply click A, and um, we get uh, the point towards our Horizon promo, and then we get two ticks, for the photo challenge on the right there and a stamp to say the photo challenge has been unlocked so now we can use the UK cover car uh, car horn and so currently I've got the hurricane uh, from Horizon 2 now I can use the Senna which is very very cool our next challenge from the challenge section of this week's festival playlist is the Horizon Open Challenge Muddy the Waters. This wants us to complete a dirt racing Horizon Open custom event and it will get us two points and a snow crew socks clothing reward. For this all you need to do is head over to your pause menu, then over into online, into Horizon Open, then you need to head over into custom racing and make sure it is on dirt and then you can pick any of the classes S2, S1, A class or B class and then you just need to complete uh, that event when it loads you in um, I doesn't I don't think it really matters if you complete one race or the whole uh, series I play save and play the whole series it's only a maximum of three races and um, possibly even one or two if you manage to join a lobby halfway through if you are lucky um, so that is all you need to do pick your favorite dirt car or just any random dirt car pick any class you want um, and then have a go at that and hopefully you'll be able to get it completed the good thing about this challenge as well, by the way, the Horizon Open Challenge is that you don't actually have to win, um, so it's not about actually, actually winning, you just have to complete the event, um, so it doesn't really put any pressure on you to have to win. You can finish last in every race and you'll still get the reward. Next up then we have the Eliminator Battle Royale Challenge, still hasn't changed since the start of the game uh, a year ago tomorrow, it is to finish 30th or better and so in the top left when you're in the Eliminator you'll see the uh, driver's left um, uh, count will be going down constantly and so all you need to do is wait for that to get to 30 drivers left or below um, and then you will have the challenge completed. At this point I would recommend that you stay in the game and get eliminated properly Properly. Um, you can do this either by letting somebody challenge you or you challenge them and then letting them beat you um, or you can just drive out of the arena and get el eliminated once the timeout bar has gone all the way to the right. Um, I wouldn't recommend quitting. Um, because that way it might kind of say to the challenge, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, bog off. Um, but I never tested it, so I can't say that for certain. But all you need to do is finish 30 or better. It will get you two points and a karaoke and more reward. And finally for the um, challenges section we have the collectibles challenge Alex Delivery which I mentioned at the start of the video. This wants you to smash 10 Horizon the UK bonus boards and it will get you 3 points towards the festival playlist and a McLaren Senna which of course you can use for the photo challenge and for the photo challenge. This is very simple and um, dotted within a couple of miles radius of the Horizon the UK festival. There are loads of these bonus boards as you can see one of them is pictured uh, on the icon there. Um, you just need to smash 10 of these, however I've noticed that it tends to count the first few as one and then it starts counting them in twos once you get to like four or five so in reality you only have to smash like seven and it will give you ten which is a bit random so probably I'll have to smash into one now and it will give me um, eight plus one is ten um, so let's go ahead and uh, get it completed Right then, so after driving for, what, 10 seconds, I have stumbled across a Horizon UK uh, bonus board here by this lovely house by the stadium. There, there's probably between 20 and 30 of them dotted around the, the area, um, kind of a couple of miles each way from the festival, I would say, a couple of roads width. Um, so, 
I need to do smash you ten of these. Um, I just smashed you one, and uh, it's gone eight plus one is ten, which is very uh, understandable, of course. Um, if you want to do, you can do it in solo where you smash through one, uh, let it rewind, it will spawn again, and you just do it that ten times until it completes. If you're doing it in co-op, well, in an online session, you'll have to actually smash through ten of them, but obviously there's loads of them, so that doesn't really matter. And if it counts it weird, then that also helps you out as well. Now we have your final chance to complete these monthly events. It is the Horizon Story and the Monthly Rivals uh, and the Forza EV Rivals. So with the Horizon Story, which is called Horizon Origins, it celebrates each Horizon game through a series of five chapters. When you first launch the game, after installing the update, which you probably will have done in summer, you will have completed the first chapter by driving to the festival in the AMG1, that was the first chapter. Then the following four chapters each celebrate each Horizon game prior to Horizon 5, by driving some of the most iconic cars and featuring some of the most iconic people from each um, kind of Horizon game. Um, and after you've done all of that, you'll get yourself 12 points towards the series and the 2013 Dodge Viper Anniversary Edition. Yes, you heard that right, Anniversary Edition with the fancy little wing there and the nice little body kit. Um, so that is a very exclusive Anniversary Edition. It can only be obtained this way. Um, <laughs> And uh, just to avoid any confusion, I have mentioned this in previous weeks, the 12 points gets added onto the series and then it gets split across the four series. So 12 divided by four is three, which means that each season your point total will go up by three. So if you're completing it in spring, you'll, add th you'll have three points added onto spring and the three points will be added onto summer, uh, autumn and winter. And then the 12 points will be added onto the series, if that makes sense. Um, so this, chap this story will still be available after um, this this week has ended, however you won't be able to get the festival playlist points and the Dodge Viper for completing it. You might be able to get the Dodge Viper but you won't be able to get the festival playlist points um, for completing it. Then of course we have the two monthly rivals events. The first one is the monthly rivals at the Lookout Circuit in the Dodge Viper Anniversary Edition and then we have the Forza EV rivals at the Archie Muller Hay Circuit in the Jaguar I-Pace. Both of these will get you 4 points towards the series and 1 point for each season and both of them require you to post a clean lap to complete. Essentially a clean lap is a lap with no um, like collisions, no rewinding, no missing checkpoints and no being reset. Uh, so basically if your lap has got an exclamation mark next to it that means it's dirty or flagged and you'll probably notice that coming up throughout the lap saying that your lap is flogged because of x probably collision or something or using rewind um, you basically don't want to do that so you can just cruise around you don't have to beat your rival or anything and just cruise around post a clean lap and then hit quit um, and then you'll have this challenge completed you do have to do that for both of them you can't just complete one and it'll do both uh, you do have to do that for both of them but both of them have the same requirements and finally then we have the Hot Wheels events again. These are only available to um, uh, customers or players who have the Hot Wheels expansion. This can be purchased separately from the Microsoft Store or it is part of the premium add-ons bundle if you want to purchase that instead. Uh, you do also have to unlock the Elite rank which is the S2 class cars slash races slash events in order to get the access to these Hot Wheels challenges and that's because quite often you have S2 class restrictions um, or below with these Hot Wheels challenges um, and that is the reason for that. First of all then we have the Water's Edge Drift Zone which will get you two points and a super wheel spin and the restriction is S2 class anything goes. Unfortunately I won't be showing you gameplay of this one because I'm not fast travelling to the Hot Wheels expansion just to do a kind of one PR stunt. Um, however I will show you the car uh, suggestions I've got for this one. So because it's a drift zone it's very easy basically any drift cars that you use on the main map will probably be able to work um, on the Hot Wheels map. Obviously the grip and the, 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 um, the surface is slightly different so that will affect it uh, to some degree but overall uh, the cars work very very similarly so first of all we have the 2016 Ford Shelby GT350R and then we have the Formula Drift number 777 Chevrolet Corvette that is quite OP um, so if you want a really easy car to drift just slide and use the 600 horsepower 1600 horsepower to slide then we have the two versions of the Hoonigan Hoonicorn we have the first version and we have the second version both are exactly the same apart from one of them for some reason has a higher top speed uh, and launch I'm not really sure why but um, we'll, we'll, we'll just go with it <laughs> 
And of course, we have the Hot Wheels Seasonal Championship, which is called Hot Wheels Athon. It is a um, sprint event, and it will get you five points to the Aussie Festival playlist and a 1973 Range Rover, um, which of course you can use for the one of the Trailblazers, like I did if you want to. Um, so for this one, the restriction is S1 Class Country UK, and as I said, it's sprint events, which are basically like road racing, but on the Hot Wheels attra- uh, tracks. Just a few brief suggestions for this one then if you are uh, going to be completing this challenge. So the 2015 Jaguar F- XFRS and then moving along we have the McLaren 620R only available to car pass owners. The McLaren 765LT which is an exclusive so cannot be bought in the auto show and the uh, Noble M600 from 2010 again an exclusive um, really really cool uh, to drive. So all four of them will easily be able to complete this championship and you'll be able to have a bit of fun on the Hot Wheels tracks. Okay then, so that wraps up this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate your support. If you did enjoy this video and want to see more videos like this on the channel, then do consider giving it a like and potentially subscribing to the channel. It does massively help me out. We're on the road to 350 forward slash 400 subscribers. So if you could help me out on that journey, uh, your support is honestly unreal guys. So thank you if you could do that. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, then of course uh, stay tuned for that. And if you want to see any other content, then feel free to recommend it down in the comments it might not get made it might be a few weeks or months before it gets made but i am happy to accept any suggestions uh, for content or anything and improvements to the videos or anything uh, like that do leave them in the comments and um, so yes thank you so much for watching i'll, I'll hopefully see you um, in series 14 uh, with the summer season if I don't post the video before then which I probably won't because I've got a very busy week coming uh, ahead so like I said thanks so much for watching sorry this video is delayed by a day um, just very very busy last night and I literally have no time at all I managed to do the tunes and that was it anyway that wraps up this video guys and I will see you in the next one hopefully next Thursday um, I'll see you then bye